Hello, this is Bill Hayhurst from TelQuest Tech Support, and I have a special message for you. We all know the typewriter was replaced by the computer printer. The 8-track player, cassette player, CD player have been replaced by the MP3 player. Technology moves forward. If you've been in the telecommunications business for any amount of time, you would have to have seen significant changes taking place. In the early 1980s, 1A2 was on its way out, and electronic key systems revolutionized the phones in our homes, offices, and businesses. Now, around 30 years later, SIP trunks are revolutionizing the way we connect our phones to outside services, and it's here to stay. Now, how many of your customers are asking you about the new type of telecommunications services and how you can benefit from them? What are you telling them? Are you like the 1985 technician that tells his customer to stick with his 1A2 phones because the new technology is untested, unreliable, or just not ready yet? Or did you make the needed effort to study and understand how electronic key systems were much better for the customer? Successful telecommunications companies have already been installing SIP trunks for quite some time. Look, don't get left behind. If you cannot provide your customer with up-to-date, accurate information on telecommunication services that he's interested in, then they're going to call someone else that can. Before we begin the programming of SIP trunks on the Avaya IP Office Partner Edition, I'm going to go over a few facts about SIP trunks, especially some of these that pertain directly to the IP Office. Some of the benefits of using the SIP trunk is that you'll have reduced rates on long distance and international calls. You also have greater clarity, especially if you're calling another customer who also has a SIP trunk. Remember, it'll be 100% digital. One more is that you can get an out of the area telephone number easily if you want to attract business in that area or make a presence. To get a Los Angeles telephone number in New York City is very easy. Now here's a direct application for the IP office partner. You can create a back door for employees to call in to check their emails or to contact other employees within the office. This stops them from calling in on the main number and blocking your customers from reaching you. If you have a remote office and you both have the same SIP service provider, there's a good chance that you can call between those two remote offices for free and once again not tie up the main business lines at either location. Here's another plus by using the Avaya IP Office Partner System. Mobile twinning. This is a really nice feature. It allows your cell phone or another phone to ring when your desk phone rings. It also allows you to transfer that call to someone else in the office. With most SIP service providers, you can manage your account over the internet with a direct web access. No more calling into the business office and trying to figure things out or have someone listen to you and type in the information. You can add, move, delete lines yourself with almost immediate results. So if you're a seasonal business and business is picking up perhaps during the summer, you could add two or three more incoming lines, channels, for a month or two, and at the end of that period of time, disconnect them very easily over the internet. We also have disaster recovery with SIP service. If your power or internet service is interrupted, your calls can be automatically transferred to a different location. In the old days, you had to call the phone company from your cell phone and plead with them to emergency transfer your calls someplace else. Then when the power was restored, you had to call them back again and have them put your service where it belongs. This can all be done automatically if you pick the right SIP service provider. All right, let's get down to what everyone's waiting for, some actual programming. This lesson on SIP trunk programming goes on the basic assumption that you already have experience with the IP Office Partner or Quick Mode or Basic Mode programming. If you haven't gone through the basic training that we have on the DVD for the IP Office Partner system, then please do so now. Otherwise, you may not get the full benefit of this lesson. There are different types of SIP trunks. In this lesson, we'll be learning the SIP registration type of SIP trunk. Also, we'll be using a free account from callcentric.com. You could use a different company if you like. 
as long as it's SIP registration. So the first thing we're going to do is go over here to Trunks and click on this. Then we're going to go into SIP Trunk Administration and click on that. And you can see it's brought open a new window where we can put in the information. Up here, the descriptive name is just that. It's a description. It has no programming value. It's just so you can remember it. So here we'll put in call centric, okay? And we'll give it a number one, just in case you have multiple trunks. Next to that, we have the domain name. Now for call centric, it is callcentric.com. All right, the authentication name will be the telephone number. And my account with them is one seven 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 two three eight eight zero three two, and you're welcome to call me on that number when you get your SIP trunk working. The password will be whatever your call center password is, so just enter the SIP trunk password that you have, whatever it might be. The number of channels. This represents how many simultaneous conversations you can have at any given time. That's going to vary by your provider. Some may give you one. Some may give you unlimited. In this case, we're going to use one to make things simple. So we have one channel, one conversation at any given time. Transport protocol is almost always UDP. Send port and listen port are almost always 5060. All right, our next area of concern is right over here in the SIP trunk channel setup. Here we can see that channel one, which we only have one channel, is going to be appearance ID 13. What that really means is that would be equal to CO line 13, as we'll see later on in the system programming. In this particular instance, it, the direction is both way. This will be an inbound as well as an outbound SIP trunk. Display name, this gets a little bit more technical. This is the name that will appear in the URI of your SIP address when calls are going out. I'll just type something in here as an example, TEST1, and I'll show you the URI, what it would look like. Where it says local URI, in most cases, you're going to use the same telephone number as you have up here. So what we would do over here, we're going to type in that same telephone number, one seven 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 two three eight eight zero three two. Anonymous, we can leave that blank. Coverage destination, that's where the calls will go if they're not answered by the primary location. We can go over here and scroll across here. Ring pattern, what it's going to sound like when it rings in. Registration required, yes. Authentication name, password, and P assert ID. These are only necessary with certain SIP service providers. Since I mentioned earlier that there's quite a few providers out there and they all do things a little bit differently, you'll have to work with them on a one-by-one -one basis. But for the purpose of our demonstration, using call centric, these are not used. All right, our next area of concern will be up here. We're going to click on the advanced setup. You can see that brings up a new screen. The first piece of information we're going to put in is up here where it says proxy server address or you could put in the proxy server URL. Basically they will provide one for you if you need it. If they don't, then you don't need it. In the case of call centric, it is call centric dot com. Yours may be an IP address. It may be anything. There's no telling. But whatever they provide you, put it in there. Right below that, where it says DNS server address, we're going to put in the Google DNS server, 8.8.8.8. You can use those exact values. If you put in your router address in there to, uh, to, to take you to the DNS server, it will not work properly with call centric, and it may not work properly with other service providers as well, since call centric has a number of different IP addresses where its proxy server may be due to load balancing. So if you want to put in your router address, go ahead, but I recommend you put in the 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. All the remaining settings up here and over here 
for the most part you should not have to change them unless your service provider instructs you and down below in this section channel setup here's how we can set up the auto attendant to answer incoming calls we know it's channel 1 appearance 13 voicemail service delay for day we can leave it at 2 voicemail service at night we could change it to say 0 what is the voicemail service schedule we'll say always and we want it to go to auto attendant 1 of course if we had other auto attendants created we could send it to those other auto attendants instead I did miss one area earlier so I'm going to go back up here and take a look at it this is the mobility caller ID format what this feature will potentially do is change the caller ID when you're using mobile twinning now what does that mean mobile twinning is a feature in the IP office partner whereby when a call comes in it can ring your extension and that call can also ring your cell phone virtually at the same time in some cases on the caller ID you'll always see the office's caller ID number as opposed to seeing the actual caller ID of the person who's calling you there are several options here in the mobility caller ID format which I'll show you in a moment however not all SIP trunk service providers will allow you to modify this keep that in mind quite honestly most will not and unfortunately call centric is one of them in any case I'm going to show you the options available all right when we click over here on the drop down we see that it's remote party ID which is almost what you always want remember the person that's calling your office is the remote party P asserted ID that could show your extension number or some information that you set up in the KSU rather than showing the outside party none which will be it's not available obviously and diversion header that's a different area in what we call a SIP message that could be used to include this information so if your SIP service provider allows you to modify the outgoing caller ID and you determine which method they're using then it will work if you're not sure at the very least ask them if they allow you to modify it then you can go through these three different settings make three or four test phone calls and find out which one works properly with their service so at this point we're going to leave it set to none all right well believe it or not those are the basics to programming a SIP registration trunk really easy what we're going to do next is go over to another area in the KSU where we need to make a little bit of a network setting all right we're going to make a little network setting change in here so we go up to system in the upper left hand corner click on that and then right below it where it says system setup we're going to click on that as well and in the middle of the screen we can see we have an IP address a subnet mask and a default gateway you'll have to put a value in there or obtain one by DHCP prior to this if you do obtain one via DHCP the default gateway is never in, is never put in for you you have to put it in manually now in our other training DVD we explain how to determine what the gateway address is if you don't know you'll have to consult that DVD in my case my the uh, my router is 192 168 1111 now yours is likely to be different so you need to do the research to determine what it is once you've done that click apply down the bottom right hand corner and then of course the blue floppy disk up on top well now that we have our SIP trunk programmed in the KSU we want to make it available for use so we need to put it on the telephones so we're going to review something here first as you can see over here on the SIP trunk it's appearance number 13 that's comparable to CO line 13 so we're going to go to the phone and put that on a button okay and to do that we're going to go up here in the left hand column and click on user setup then we're going to click right below it on button programming and in this example we're going to use extension 10 and it's going to be button number 8 so we put our mouse over button number 8 right click 
choose assign a feature the possibilities come up we go to line assignment tab click on that we go to line which is actually our appearance 13 click on that we tell it we want it to ring immediately click on that go down to OK and now you can see that line 13 which is appearance 13 will ring on the phone as well as appear we can make calls out by pressing that button what you could also do is put your mouse over the actual paper area where it says line 13 click on that and erase it and type in SIP now when the person presses that button on their phone it will say the word SIP in the window on their LCD the next thing I'd like to show you is how to test the SIP line to make sure it's working now obviously you can push the button make a phone call and see if it goes through but prior to that you can do this watch the LED on the button if the LED is lit that means the SIP trunk is out of service if the LED is not lit that means the SIP trunk is in service another word from experience the SIP trunk registration does not take place immediately sometimes it may be 10 15 20 seconds or more before the SIP trunk actually comes in service when it finishes its communications with the SIP service provider all right that concludes our training on the registration type of SIP trunk for the partner quick mode basic edition IP office I would highly encourage you to go to callcentric.com get your own IP freedom account set up your own trunk and get it operational it's much better to do it at your lab than it is to be on the job. Remember, you want to be prepared when you go out on the job rather than calling for tech support and trying to learn it from scratch. This is Bill Hayhurst once again for TelQuest Tech Support. Be sure you watch part two for registration SIP trunk programming for the IP office essential mode. Thanks for watching this video.